Father, we come to you. Just thank you for this opportunity to once again come and worship you. Father, we, as we learned this morning, and your number, th we were studying in the number three, that we saw the significance of it. And Father, we're going to continue our study here on the inspired King James Bible. And we see that, that those are the things, some of the things that, that make it show the inspiration of the Bible on, the, on how certain words are found a certain number of times where in modern Bibles, oftentimes they'll have either more or less of that number and, and removes the meaning of the number. And Father, we just ask your blessings on this service. Be with each and every one that's listening, whether they're here or whether they're listening online. And Father, we just give you the honor and praise, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be continuing the series on the inspired King James Bible compared to the modern corrupt Bibles, and this is part 13. Modern Bibles use words that are not as accurate, such as changing Jesus Christ to Christ Jesus. The word order is ordained by God and must not be changed. Both are used, but are each used when God so designates. Christ Jesus is more often used by Paul, since he knew Jesus first as Messiah, whereas the apostles first knew Jesus as Jesus the man. Christ is Jesus' title, and in some places it is more appropriate to have his name first. You know, sometimes you would say, you know, like a king so-and-so or whatever, but, you know, other times you would, you know, a person sometimes like say, like the, if the president, if you grew up with him, he was your best friend, then in private, you know, oftentimes you might refer to him just by his name, but in public you would refer to him as, you know, president so-and-so or whatever. So. You know, there, there are reasons where you use the um, Christ Jesus versus Jesus Christ or so forth or, or vice versa. But I also think, well, like I said, Christ, Christ is Jesus' title. We'll leave it at that. And uh, in some places, as I said, it's more appropriate to have his name first. Now, other places, Paps is changed to Breast. Paps refer only to the nipples and not the whole breast, so it is more accurate as a baby drinks from the nipple specifically and not the breast as a whole. You know, some of these changes aren't necessarily things that's going to determine someone's salvation, but it just shows you how the King James Bible is accurate on things, and it just shows you how these other Bibles that they just don't care, they'll go around changing things to, to whatever. You know, the, a baby you know, sucks from the, the nipples, that, that's the paps, not the whole breast. So, you know, those little changes, it's just showing you not exactly. Some other ones are heart becomes deer in places when heart refers specifically only to a male red deer and not just any deer and not even the females. You know, a good example of Psalm 42, 1, where it talks about the, the heart and he's getting a drink of water by the brook. You know, yes, a heart is a deer, but we're talking specific deer. This is a heart is specifically only a male red deer. It's not even a female, so it's, it can't even be a female deer. It has to be a male, and it has to be a red deer. So it can't be a white-tailed deer. It can't be, you know, some other type of uh, deer. It has to be a male red deer. Now, bullock is changed to bull when bullock refers to a castrated bull, and not all bulls. Not all bulls are castrated. When they're castrated, it becomes a bullock. You know, and the, and the bullocks were used for sacrifice, and God commanded a castrated bull. So this is important to know in order to obey God. You know, if the Israelites just said, well, we'll just change it to bull, we'll just grab a bull. No, God said it had to be a castrated bull. So, you know, these are things that show you that you can't just change things to, to anything you want. They're not as accurate. Heifer is changed to cow in modern Bibles. A heifer is a young female cow that has not born a calf, whereas a cow has. A cow has had babies. A heifer has not had babies. You know, so again, there, there, there's a difference there. God told the Israelites to use a red heifer for purification. It had to be a heifer and not a cow that had been polluted by childbirth. You know, we see when a woman always gave a, a birth to a child, she'd have to give 
a sin offering for her purification after her days of purification were done because the uh, being pregnant you know and, and uh, pollutes you and that's why this red had to be this red heifer it couldn't just be a red cow it had to be a red heifer that we had never had babies never even been pregnant now proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 speaks of the ant and her ways in the king james bible but modern bibles say its ways ants that you see and those doing work are always female ants so the king james bible is accurate in saying her ways if you guys want to look it up we'll, we'll read it real quick proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 and then just stay there in proverbs because we got another verse we'll look at too then so proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. But like I said, it says her ways because all the ants that you see doing the work and so forth, those are always female ants. The, the male ants are, are smaller, they don't live as long, and they stay down below. That, so again, it's not it's ways you know that it, it's referring to only specifically female ants so god once again he's the creator he knows these things and that's why he put it in his inspired word proverbs chapter 30 verse 28 speaks of the spider in her hands but modern bibles change this to lizard so they not only have the wrong animal but once again, lose the fact how the King James Bible is accurate in saying her hands for the spider. Just like the ants, spiders that you see and those you see doing work are always females. Male spiders are mere specks. I mean, so it's very unlikely you're going to see one. I mean, they're just like a little speck of a dot. God also shows how spiders have hands and legs, whereas science tries to say spiders have eight legs. God knows since he created them. You can you also use hands to work with, not legs. So, you know, let's take a look at this verse, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 28. You know, a spider spins all this silk webbing and so forth and does that with her hands. And as I said, it's her, not not male or it. So Proverbs chapter 30, verse 28. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. But it's, notice it says the spider taketh hold with her hands. So again, it's showing you that it's a that the ones you see are females. You know, if, if you've seen the spider in your king's palace or your own house or wherever you see it, it's a female. And it grabs things with her hands. The, the front legs, those are not legs. Those are hands. You know, people, as I said, scientists say, oh, they have eight legs. No, they have four legs and four hands. You know, they have the hands that are going forward and work just like, like ours do. And then they have the legs that, that um, you know, are legs, the, the hind part. So, you know, we see, you know, God is describing the accuracy here. And as I said, most modern Bibles, they don't even show, say spider at all. They'll say some other, they'll say lizard most of the time. Which, so they don't even have the right animal. And, and it loses this whole connection of this accuracy of showing you how God's word is, is, is accurate here. And it's inspired. You know, why, I mean, if it wasn't inspired, no person's not necessarily going to know. Very, very few people know that it, when you see an ant or a spider, that it's a female. So they're not going to, you know, most translators are not going to put something like that in there because they won't even know this stuff. But God, on his inspiration, he's the creator. He knew this stuff. So he put it in there to show his his glory and its inspiration. Now I heard a story of a man who got saved because he saw the truth in the King James Bible about the ant and spider. He would not have gotten saved with a modern Bible and their errors. So, you know, here's a case where this man, he was a scientist or whatever, and or I think he's a scientist, I'm not 100% sure, I don't remember, but in any case, he had heard about these stories of these two verses that I read you about the ant and the spider, and he realized how accurate they were compared to other, you know, other cases. And he, you know, that was one of the things that helped lead him to the Lord because he realized, well, wow, well, if God, you know, if this word is so accurate on something like this, 
that it must be correct on other things, such as salvation. And, you know, that, it was those two verses that led this man to the Lord. So, you know, modern Bibles where you change these things, this man more than likely probably never would have gotten saved. Some modern Bibles change virgin in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 to young woman or maid. These are not the same. Many young women are not virgins. You know, just because a girl's a teenager does not mean that, she, you know, she's a, a virgin. You know, people often say that Mary was about 14 years old when uh, <clears throat> Jesus was born. Now, we don't know exactly scripture doesn't say, but we know that she was young or whatever, but just whatever she was, trust me, there are a lot of 14-year-olds that just because they're a young girl or a young woman does not make them a, a uh, virgin. You know, there are a lot of women, a lot of uh, girls younger than that that are no longer virgins. So, you know, they're not the same thing here. And it's very important. Jesus had to be born of a virgin or he would have had been born with a sin nature just like all of us. And he then would need his own savior and could not be ours. You know, so it's, it's very, very important that you have virgin in there. Because if Jesus, as I said, if he was born of some of a girl that was not a virgin, you know, if Mary had not still been a virgin, then Jesus would have been born to sin nature just like us. You know, he could not have been our savior. So that, that there is a, a significant change that, that is, uh, does change theology. Some Bibles that change virgin are the Revised Standard Version, the Jerusalem Bible, that's a Roman Catholic one, the Roman Catholic New American Bible, the Revised Edition, that's uh, their latest edition of the New American Bible, the Good News Translation, the New Jerusalem Bible, and the New Revised Standard Version. You know, the RSV, I think, if memory serves me, was the first one to, to have this change. And it was a big deal when it first came out. Then many Christians noticed this and, and condemned the Bible, and rightly so. But people, unfortunately, have just made it worse. We've had even more Bibles, and people continue to still using the Bible, even with this disastrous change in there. Some Bibles, such as the modern English version, leave virgin in the text, but they have young woman in the footnotes. So, you know, even, even if they don't change it in the text, sometimes they'll change it in the footnotes. So, again, casting that doubt on things and trying to act like, well, this wasn't right. They just didn't have the guts to actually change it in the, the text. Many also change a virgin, as found in the King James Bible, to the virgin to support the Roman Catholic false doctrine of Mary staying a perpetual virgin. You know, as if she's the virgin, or she's referred to as the virgin. No, she was just a virgin that God used, but she was not the virgin like the Roman Catholics try to teach. Some change physician found in the King James Bible to doctor. You know, again, it is not as accurate as there are doctors of theology, ministry, music, etc. You know, not all doctors are doctors of medicine. You know, we oftentimes, as Americans, will say, you know, this guy, you know, we, we always say the doctor, but really they're physicians, and that's what God calls them in His Word, because there are other doctors besides just doctors of medicine, and what we would always normally think of as doctors. There, as I said, there's doctors of these other many other degrees. So. You know, by saying, you know, making this change to, to, from physician to doctor, again, it's not as accurate. Modern Bibles often change shoes in Luke chapter 10, verse 4, in the King James Bible, to sandals. Not all shoes are sandals. You know, granted, a lot of them probably back then did probably wear sandals or something similar. But if God wanted sandals, he uses it elsewhere in Scripture, he would have said sandals. And as I said, not all shoes are sandals. So, you know, that's not an accurate um, change. You know, God would have made it sandals if he wanted it sandals. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 in the King James Bible says to preach the gospel to all creatures. 
but many modern Bibles say all creation or something similar. Some Bibles that do this are most Roman Catholic Bibles, the Contemporary English Version, the Living Bible, the Good News Translation, New Living Translation, English Standard Version, New Revised Standard Version, the Revised Standard Version, and many others. We do not preach the gospel to trees, stars, and other things that are part of God's creation, but are not preachers. You know, that's why it says we preach to every creature, not to every creation, because we don't go around preaching to non-living things. Like I said, we don't go to a stone wall. We don't go to a tree or to the to the uh, planets and stuff like that. We don't preach to, to those, those things. We also do not preach the gospel to animals either. You don't go around preaching the gospel to your pets. Or go to the zoo and start preaching the gospel to the animals in the zoo. You know, and I, I think another reason why it, it mentions preaching to the creatures, it doesn't just say where it says, um, you know, it doesn't just say go preach to all the people in the world, but it says to preach to every creature. I think there's a reason for that. You know, if you've heard my sermon on Genesis 6, where the, the women had, uh, the, some of the angels came down and made it with the women, produced the giants and so forth. You know, there were many, and I've, I've preached that before, where they also, these angels mated with, like in my Genesis study, 1 through 11, talks about some of it, but they made it, these angels also made it with animals and produced all these uh, unusual creatures, such as the, um, um, I'm trying to think of the one that's mentioned directly in Scripture, but it's in Isaiah, there starts with an S, I think, or whatever. Anyway, but like the werewolf and some of these other creatures, that God tells us to preach to every creature because sometimes, you know, if one of these people happens to be a giant, I told you that we're living in the end times and, and Satan is still going around and producing these, these hybrids of part angel, part uh, man. And, you know, they don't look any different. You know, I think that's why he's working on things so they don't look like giants or something like that where... You know, God wants us to go out there. We don't know who, that, that they're, they're hybrid. The hybrids cannot get, get saved. But we don't know that. So that's why we just go out there to preach to everybody. And then God will sort them out later on. But it's our duty to just go out and preach the gospel to, to every person that we see. And then God can decide whether it's, you know, one of these hybrids or, or not. You know, and I think that's why he says creature versus just going to preach to every person. But even if even if if not, like I said, we don't preach to animals and all this creation and so forth. Many Bibles remove Calvary in Luke chapter twenty three, verse thirty three, where Jesus was crucified, and change it to the skull. Churches are named Calvary Baptist or something Calvary. Yet they often use a Bible that removes Calvary. That's the only place in Scripture where that word's found. And yet, like I said, you'll have, I've seen churches like that. They'll be called something Calvary Baptist Church or something like that or Calvary, some other denomination. And you go and you find out what Bible they're using and they're using something like the uh, RSV or, or something like that. And, you know, that word has been removed in there. So they're very church that they're naming it after. Like, okay, well. Why you? Where do you get Calvary from? It's not in your Bible. So how, how, why are you naming your church Calvary Baptist when you show me in Scripture that you can't you can't show me because that word's not even in your Bible? You know, so it just shows you how foolishness some of these churches are that they 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 take a word that when it's convenient for them they'll take a word from the King James Bible to use for their their purpose, but they don't really believe it. If they did, they wouldn't be using a Bible that didn't even have that word in there. For example, you know, even Lucifer, where you won't find that except for in the King James Bible, the New King James, and, you know, some older ones or whatever. But, you know, in these modern ones, you won't find them, find that name in there. So, again, why are you talking Lucifer? Like, well, who's Lucifer? Because he's not in your Bible. So, you know, they're taking things from the King James Bible and using it to their, you know, when it serves their purpose. But some of the Bibles that remove Calvary are most 
Roman Catholic Bibles, English Standard Version, Roman, I mean, uh, the Revised Standard Version, New Revised Standard Version, Living Bible, uh, Contemporary English Version, Good News Translation, New Living Translation, the New International Version, the Holman Christian Standard Bible, New American Standard Bible, and others. Luke chapter 23, verse 39 in the King James Bible says, Jesus was crucified with two malefactors, or malefactors, however you pronounce it, but modern Bibles say criminals, robbers, or something else. A malefactor is a specific criminal that is publicly sentenced to death as these men were. So again, they yes, they are criminals, but they were, there's a difference. A, a malefactor is one that has been publicly executed versus somebody else that, you know, was just a criminal. So, I mean, there are, again, this is, this is more specific on what kind of criminals there were and so forth. Romans chapter 13, verse 9, kill in the King James Bible is oftentimes changed to murder. These are not the same as abortion is killing a baby, yet government says it is not murder. The same applies to physician-assisted suicide, where the government says it's not murder. But God calls it killing and condemns both of these. You know, even, even suicide used to be considered a crime, but it's not considered a crime anymore. You know, the government doesn't consider it as, as murder or killing, but yet... God says, you know, because suicide is killing of oneself. God still says it is killing. So, you know, it's because the government says something is not. So, you know, to change from kill to murder, you know, it's not as accurate. It's not the same because what the government says, you know, abortion is clearly murder, but yet the government says it's not. So, you know, you, you can't, you know, they're clearly not the same, same thing. Devil is changed to demon in modern Bibles, and this removes God's built-in dictionary showing they are evil. The very word devil has the word evil built in it, and this gets removed when it is changed to demon. You know, the very last four letters of the word devil has the word evil in it, showing God's built-in dictionary of showing you what, what these people are, that the devils are evil. You know, you have the word demon, and you, and you lose that connection. People like to glorify demons as if they were like your buddies or something. Galatians chapter 5 verse 12 uses the phrase cut off, where Paul is telling the people to stay away from those causing trouble. Modern Bibles change this to castrate or something similar when it has nothing to do with the male anatomy. They'll change it to castrate or uh, I'm trying to think of... Uh, no, I can't think right now off the top of my head, but, you know, they, they make these other changes where, you know, they're, they're, they're talking about mutilating the male anatomy when that has nothing to do with what Paul was talking about. Stay away from these people and the, that are causing trouble. You know, he didn't, wasn't talking about cutting off their male anatomy. This goes back to how modern Bibles are always thinking sex. Modern Bibles changed the word farthing found in the King James Bible in Mark chapter 12 verse 42 to many different values. They'll have all different things depending on the Bible. But Mark chapter 12 verse 42 is an example of why you do not change the money from the King James Bible. Many Bibles try to make it work them out at the time of the Bible being published, but 10 years later that value changes. So one of them sometimes will say two cents. Now I've seen other Bibles say like three cents. Or something else. Well, it keeps changing. You start looking at these Bibles. Well, what is it? Because something worth today is not the same as what it was worth four or five years ago or something like that. So, you know, money is constantly changing, either going up or down in, in value. In that one verse, you can find Bibles with a vast difference in value of the farthing. A farthing was used by Great Britain up to the 1950s, so it is still known by many people and can be easily learned by those who do not know. So again, you know, just stick with the King James Bible and, and so you don't have this confusion of 
things, you know, and I've said that before, even about they'll change penny to denarius. Everybody knows, I mentioned that before, what a penny is, you know, even in the United States, we call our cent a penny, even though that's incorrect. In, in, over in the United Kingdom, they still, you know, refer to it as the penny. People know what a penny is, but what's a denarius? You know, so it goes back to those harder words I was talking about and so forth. And, you know, just stop trying to change all these things. Or, you know, a day's wage. I've talked about that before, too. They'll change something like a day's wage. You know, what's a day's wage? A day's wage for me is maybe not the same thing for somebody over in Africa. Or a day's wage for uh, a multi-billionaire. Trust me, his day's wage or a baseball player, his day's wage is a lot more than my day's wage. So... You know, those are just not accurate descriptions of, you know, leave it what, what God's word has. You know, when it says a penny, then leave it as a penny. Everybody understands that a penny's not worth a whole lot. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, in the King James Bible, Jesus is called good master. But most modern Bibles remove the good and just have master, or even worse, many say teacher. A teacher is not necessarily a master, and Jesus is not good in modern Bibles. By removing good in verse 16, it makes Jesus look like a liar when he says in verse 17, Why callest thou me good, if he was never called good? You know, if you remove good from verse 16, he's turning around in verse 17 and saying, Why callest thou me good? Well, he never was called good, so it makes Jesus look like he's a liar. So again, it goes back to what I talked about last week where... They're making Jesus a liar. You know, in this case, it's not directly like the other ones, but it's indirectly inferring that, he, you know, he's like, why would he, why would you say something about why you call me good if he never called me good? So, you know, stick with the King James Bible. And as I said, a teacher and a master are certainly not the same thing at all. You know, you can be, Jesus was a teacher, but he was also a master. But most teachers, you go to high school or in school where there's teachers, they're not, not masters, you know, the, the, the um, as a rule, you know, I mean, people are, there's a big difference between a teacher and a master. You know, not only that, but Jesus is, a master is above a teacher, and Jesus is much more than just our teacher. You know, Jesus was and is our master. If there are many more examples that could be given than just these, God expects his word to be translated 100% accurate, not just close or not even correct at all. As seen here in some cases so you know even though you could say well you know like I mentioned the paps of the breast yet to be a nitpicky or this or that like I said these aren't things that necessarily going to change your salvation affect your salvation but it, it shows you that just like I mentioned with that man that got saved over the ant and the spider that the, the importance of, of having things accurate because if God's getting these so-called little things accurate then you could trust them on the big things such as your salvation and other things, you know, where you're going to spend eternity and, and so forth. So it's important that, you know, if you're taking God's word, it should be 100% accurate, not just whatever you feel like making it so that you can get a um, copyright. You know, it, it, we don't want it just close. We want it 100% accurate. And in some cases, as I showed you, they're not even correct at all. So, you know, it's, it's they're just, you know, such as the virgin and, and a young woman or a young maid or something like that. I mean, that there is definitely a doctrinal, theological issue. Modern Bibles are hard to understand and inaccurate, yet God said he reveals things to babes to those who search out the truth as found in the King James Bible. Bibles are not to be hard that you must ask a priest, as Roman Catholics think they need to, or pastor what it means. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. So Matthew chapter 11. In verse 25. So Matthew chapter 11. In verse 25. At that time Jesus answered and said. I thank thee O Father. Lord of heaven and earth. Because thou hast hid these things. From the wise and prudent. And has revealed them unto babes. You know, that's what God, you know, a lot of these people that, you know, like your college educated professors and all these sm so called smart people, God keeps things hidden from oftentimes from them. He wants us, 
you know, the so-called, you know, look at what Jesus used. He used fishermen. He used, um, you know, Paul was a tent maker and so forth. You know, he just used the common common man to to do his, his glory. You know, he used, David was a shepherd and so forth. So, you know, it, these weren't the so-called highly educated. Remember, the Pharisees even accused the Peter and then like, well, how do these guys know everything? They're not smart like us. I mean, that's basically what they were saying to him. And they were trying to figure it out. And, you know, they were like, well, because God gave us the words. It's not, not us speaking. It, you know, it's God using us to speak for him. And that's what God does with the King James Bible. Is he takes it to those who want to be humble and, and seek out his word. And God reveals it unto babes for those that want to find the truth. But you won't find that in these modern Bibles, as I've shown you. Now, a few number patterns found in the King James Bible are how Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 22, have the same number of letters, vowels, and consonants. And 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, has exactly double of each of these. Most modern Bibles remove 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, so they do not have this pattern. Those that do not remember the verse, such as the New King James Version, still do not have a pattern as they add an extra letter in Genesis chapter 1 when they change heaven to heavens, which is incorrect. You know, it's wrong as the singular heaven was not divided until into three heavens until later in the creation week. But I mean, think about that. You had the verse Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and then the last verse of Scripture in Revelation chapter 22, verse 21. They each have the exact same number of letters, vowels, and consonants. You know, no man could do something like that. And then, like I said, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 has exactly double of each of those. Like you combine those two verses and it has that equivalent in that verse. You know, that's clearly from God and not from man. Now, another is how Jesus is the seventh word in Matthew chapter 1. And the seventh from the end of Revelation chapter 22, verse 21. Jesus is often the sixth to last word in modern Bibles. Oftentimes because they remove the word, I don't remember if it's Lord or Christ, I'd have to double check. But the, you know, in the King James Bible, you know, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 21, you know, it says, Lord Jesus Christ. It says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Where they oftentimes will remove, I believe it's the, uh, like I said, I can't, it, it's Christ, I guess. So they, would, they, they have the grace of our, you know, something like the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. Well, by removing that word, now, now Jesus becomes the sixth word instead of um, the seventh word. So again, you're losing that, that pattern. Now there are a uh, few Bibles that do have Jesus as the seventh word in Matthew one, but like I said, but they don't. Very few of them have that that pattern in it. There's a few Bibles that do have the pattern in both cases, but the very few. But the thing is, they won't have these other patterns that are that are listed in, in Scripture. But the end of Romans chapter one, I mentioned this uh, this morning sermon lists 23 things that lead to death, but most Bibles only have 21 things listed, destroying how 23 means death. You know, there's other places I've talked about that before. You know, Psalm 23 talks about that. I saw that in my um, sermon. And then we see in Genesis chapter 23, it's about the death of Sarah. And 23 different times, it mentions a word and some, something to do with death, showing you that the number 23 means death. Well, when, that, when they remove two things from the list, not only are they remove them from God's word, but they're destroying the number pattern from the number 23 that God has in Scripture. There are many other number patterns that are only found in the King James Bible, showing that only it is inspired. As I said, a few have some, such as Jesus is the seventh word, but none have all of them except the King James Bible. You know, even as I mentioned the New King James Version, it supposedly just changes the these and the thous, but like I said, it doesn't even have that pattern of the Genesis 1-1 and 
in Revelation 22, 20, 21, showing you that, that there's there's a lot more there than, you know, they're removing a lot more and making a lot more changes than what they want to admit to. Now, no man can translate a Bible to get it to intentionally match these patterns and still be translated correctly, showing these patterns are from God. You know, you can switch it around and make it so some of these patterns might work, but the key is you need to have these patterns, but also have it be translated properly from the Hebrew, the Aramaic, and the Greek, as well as to make sense and so forth. So, you know, it's more than just randomly, let's throw these patterns in there. You also have to have it be accurate and make sense. You know, no man can sit there and do that. No, nobody would sit there and count all these things like, okay, I've got so many letters. Oh, and i got 20, 20 consonants or whatever. So, you know, it clearly shows you, you know, most of them probably weren't even aware of some of these patterns. Or they don't even care. And that's why, you know, it's like with the New King James where they add heavens over heaven. As I said, that is completely inaccurate. That there was only originally one heaven and then it got divided as the week went on. And then you saw that in chapter 2 verse 1 but then now we have heavens roughly one in every five verses has a number showing excuse me roughly one in every five verses has a number showing the importance of numbers to God who is the great mathematician remember God himself is the one that uh, created math so Um, you know, it's important to understand that we have, we, you know, look at these numbers. God put them, these patterns in there for a reason. You know, I mentioned that in the sermon this morning when we were studying the number three, that it's not a coincidence that certain things would be three days or even we study the number seven, that it was seven days. Why do these numbers keep coming up over and over? Versus, as I said, why isn't it four days or two days or nine days or whatever? And it's the same thing with these, these patterns. These things are in there for those who seek to search them out. But we're going to stop there for today and we'll continue this uh, next week. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time you've given us here this morning that, that, to just continue with this uh, study of the inspired King James Bible compared to the corrupt modern Bibles. And Father, we just ask your blessings on the rest of the day. Just be with each and every one. Just continue to bless your servant and use them in a mighty way to just win many souls for you, Lord. And Father, that should be the ultimate goal of all Christians to go out there and to try to win souls and not to just go to church for social activity or whatever it may be but you know our goal is to you know that's fine to socialize with christians but we, you know brothers and sisters but we need to first and foremost try to win souls for you lord and father we just ask your blessings on on this day and each and every one that's listening and in jesus name we pray amen